Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Charlotte. And in this short video, we're going to be talking about some of the questions we often get asked every single May. Charlotte, what's the first big one that we get asked? Has to be baby birds. Has to be. So many people finding baby birds in their gardens, really invested, want to see them succeed. So what particular questions do you get around baby birds? I think we're going to look at a few today, but one I think is about um, different types of parenting, isn't it? Yeah, so different techniques and concerns over where's mum, where's dad's, um, will they have a next another brood, things like that. Um, and it, to be honest, it ranges so much between different species, so the answer's never going to be the same. House Martins is a lovely example. Um, so both the parents build the nest, incubate, look after the young, and then um, once the first brood's done and they've, they're independent, actually the, the older siblings help with the next brood as well. So they have so many helpers. So that's like an extreme end of having lots of extra help and to improve and hopefully have lots more fledged successfully. And then you get something um, on the other scale. So like a cuckoo, for instance, where the parent will lay the egg um, in a host nest and then have nothing to do with that offspring at all for the whole season. So really difference in um, how, how young are brought up. Thinking of something like a starling, and I'm thinking of them because I see them a lot in my garden, they have more than one brood, don't they? So the juveniles of starlings, they don't help with the next the next brood, do they? No, not that I'm aware of, um, but at least mum and dad do the lion share together. Um, so they are one of the species that they both incubate the eggs and they both look after the young, <laughs> which is better than some species. <laughs> Yeah, so there are some, aren't there, where where the, the 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 usually the female, but actually in some cases, even in the UK, the male is left with the eggs. Yeah, so phalaropes are a really good example. Obviously, we don't get that many breed, unfortunately, in the UK. Um, but those that do, so the redneck phalarope, actually the male is the one that does all the incubating and all the hard work. Um, once the female has laid the eggs, um, he does the rest. It's probably because he is um, not as vivid in colour and as colourful as the female which is quite unusual in birds um, so yeah really good example of where the male does all the hard work. Whereas a lot of the birds that we'll be seeing perhaps um, in the rest of the UK because phalaropes are really going to be in the far sort of northern islands of Scotland mm -hmm. northern parts of Scotland aren't they so birds we won't see in other parts of the UK. Um, now we've talked about mallards in a previous episode so we won't uh, dwell on those but I know that it's the female mallard that gets left with the ducklings is that common across ducks and geese? Um, it ranges from species to species. So, yeah, some it, they take it in turns. Others, the female does all the incubation, but the male is still guarding her, looking after her, and they look after the young together. And then with mallards, where the female does it all, so she does the incubation, then does the caring. So it does range from species to species still. Yeah. So there are huge parental differences. And, of course, there are differences too in the types of baby birds. So some baby birds, especially those I'm thinking that where the parents have nested on the ground, some of these baby birds, like lapwings and other wading birds, they just pop up, stand up on their little wobbly legs and totter off, don't they? Whereas yeah. a lot of the other birds, like the common garden birds, they're completely helpless. Yeah, no, exactly. And even things like, so a comparison between thrush species, two weeks incubation, two weeks till they fledge, three weeks to look after them, quite short. Whereas if you have something like a mute swan, for instance, it's over a month to incubate, then like four and a half, five months looking after that youngsters till the parents like literally force them out. So very, very different. Five months. Goodness. Mm -hmm. And that's comparing yeah. that with the house masters you mentioned at the beginning, where that, that first brood of house masters is ready to help with the parents. Yeah, like they grow up pretty quick and they're already helping out. Very mature. <laughs> yes, or well, lots of differences between birds then. So that brings me to the, the question that we probably get asked. Well, what is one of the one of the big questions, really, isn't it? Because it, it has a real impact on the birds. If you find a baby bird in your garden, perhaps alone, perhaps on the ground, what's the best thing to do? So first of all, gauge what it what the baby bird is. Is it a fledgling or is it a true nestling? So is it fully feathered? Is it still bald? That is your first point of call. Fully feathered, most of the time you leave them well alone. Mum and dad have invested so much time in this youngster, as we've discussed here. Um, so they're not going to have left it. The parental instincts are really, really strong. So they will be close by. 
And as soon as you leave, it's most likely that they'll be there. So if you help like hide around the corner, for instance, I'm sure you'll find them fly down and look after their youngsters. If it's an immediate danger, like near a road, for instance, maybe shuffle it along into vegetation. But other than that, you really don't need to intervene. If it's a nestling, so it is bald, then yes, you will need to do a lot more for that youngster. If you're not sure where the nesting has come from, don't risk it by just trying to put it in a nest that you found. Um, if it goes in the wrong nest, that's, that's really not good at all. And that could affect the owner of that actual nest as well. So it impacts two different families, not just one. That's a good point. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, if you find a nestling, get in touch with a local rescue center. Help Wildlife website is brilliant. So I definitely would recommend that. Excellent. So another question about baby birds. What happens if you accidentally expose a nest? And we, we do say try not to trim your hedges at this time of year. Yeah. But what happens if you do accidentally somehow uncover a nest? Yeah, easily done. And it doesn't even have to be a hedge. It could be um, in your shed. We had a couple of years ago, um, a gentleman rang up. He had um, a nest on top of his golf clubs. And it was just that it was time for the summer. Get the golf out. And yeah, they were sitting on top of the golf clubs. So it's easily done. If you do expose a nest, try to cover it back up. If you did do some cutting or vegetation, for instance, threading it back through, um, so the cuttings that you've got, thread them back through so it's covered again. Sun exposure is a big risk to youngsters. So yeah, cover it back over and also predation. So yeah, making sure it's hidden again is the best outcome. And if it was a situation like the shed with, I don't know, on your garden furniture or something that you're storing, just leave it as it is. Unfortunately, it's how it's best. But most of these species, you're looking at two weeks, three, no, four weeks, and then you can go back to normal. Um, so just leave them alone, basically. So absolutely, especially if those those are birds where you know they're going to come back and do another have another brood. You want to oh, keep yeah. an eye on those. So you get the pleasure of watching the, the parents raise the young, quickly move your garden furniture, and then hopefully they'll find somewhere else nearby so you can watch them raise their, their next batch. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Now, um, lots of baby birds are going to be around in the garden. Uh, parents are going to be feeding them. I'm still putting out bird food. I've still got my sunflower hearts hanging up. I've still got peanuts hanging up. Um, still got niger seeds i'm not putting fat out though um am i doing the, the right kind of thing what sort of food should i be putting out and avoiding i think the biggest thing is remembering choking hazards that's like the biggest thing so the youngsters do really suffer from choking um so peanuts need to be in the proper mesh peanut feeder just so the youngsters well the parents can't access the like big chunks basically only small bits and then that won't be a choking hazard um, with bread as well, um, if people are putting out chunks of bread, obviously it dries, goes all crusty and big, can also be a chunk, um, a choking hazard. And then there's also things like mealworms, um, dried fruit. If you could soak those during spring and summer, so they're just that little bit easier to swallow and sort of chew up, that's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, because I always think mealworms are quite important because a lot of these birds will be feeding insect food. But obviously yeah. we, we will are most often going to be buying them dried. So it is well worth soaking them. It doesn't take long to soak mealworms, does it really? No, no, not at all. And it's that extra um, bit of water content as well. Really, really good for the youngsters, especially if it's a hot day. It's sort of, yeah, really, really good. Just that little bit better. <laughs> and, and I always look forward to the first squabbling brood of starlings that arrives on our lawn and the noise is 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 incredible but at, um, I think that's a real highlight of this time of year isn't it? Oh I love it you saying that last year I just remember there was this one really needy young starling that just rather than try and find its own food it fledged it was beautiful really vibrant colours for the youngsters have that sort of tan but with the pretty colours it's they're really lovely um, and it would just sat on the, the table all day long, just squawking at anything that landed on the table, like, feed me, feed me. I can't feed myself. Feed me. And it didn't even matter if it was a starling or not. It was really demanding. It was really funny to watch. Loved it. I think that's something that uh, we'll leave you with now. So I think look out for these. Enjoy watching them. And bear in mind that these baby birds will need to, to be protected. They'll need the right kind of food. And most of all, they need us not to interfere. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you. Bye.